Archers tonight at seven when pips on tenterhooks. In a moment, a student investigates the mysterious disappearance of a waitress in our afternoon drama. First, hesitation, deviation, repetition. Perhaps now there should be penalties for getting personal. I was a Tim Jarrett. I think the word young came twice. Oh yes. On just a minute, you need to be sharp. And now you're sporting a beard. You don't look as young as you used to do. <laughs> I'm sorry. And its host, Nicholas Parsons, always leads by example. But I was going to say, now you look younger than you used to. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it works like that. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you look fatter. I mean, thinner. <laughs> <laughs> the new series of Just a Minute. Graham, it's your turn to begin. Oh, crow's feet. <laughs> Starts next Monday evening at 6:30 on BBC Radio Four. And now on BBC Radio 4, a drama written by a team of young writers who first met while working on the EastEnders spin-off E20. Romantic comedy meets film noir in the mysterious case of Maria by Florence Vincent, Ema Kenny, Wemi Ogunyankin, Corey Montague Sholey and Sandra Townsend. Maria's case found me in an unexpected way. You know, the way a stray cat sometimes adopts an owner. One minute you're throwing it a scrap, then BAM! You're settled into bed with the latest Bianca Kane thriller, and your new feline friend is curled up beside you. That's how the mysterious case of Maria found me. It pounced. The circumstances that caused me to be in a run-down Cuban bar that Saturday afternoon aren't particularly exciting. I was the new girl in a big city. And after a few weeks, a secret college dropout. Unbeknownst to my parents, I had left my law conversion course. As Detective Kane says in Playing With Peril, the law was smothering me, and a sniffer dog's no good without its nose. That's just before she renounces her badge and goes rogue, impersonating another criminal to find the killer. Then dreamy defense attorney Duke O'Sullivan rescues her in court. <sighs> Just like Bianca, I was going rogue. Well, it was better than falling asleep in lectures. With its neon lights and rum-stained floors, Pepe's was the perfect hideout for a dropout like me. It was just like some dive where Bianca would meet Duke for an off-the-record rendezvous. He'd step out of his 1963 mint-green Cadillac, saunter through the doors, blonde hair slicked to the side, and order a drink from the sexy Latina waitress. Chica bonita, Ellie. A waitress just like Maria, the big name at Pepe's. A dame with legs that wouldn't quit and skin the collar of mocha. Definitely the coolest person I'd ever met in my 21 years. Hola, Maria. Solo again. <sighs> She'd asked me that every day for a month. Maria was never alone. I'm enjoying being single. You read too much. These books hey. oh, have to go. <sighs> Men are like girls who can read. They run in opposite directions. This is the 21st century. Oh, they are all gay men. Not all of them. Man, I stink. I need to stop eating those guacamole burgers. You know the concept of yin and yang? Well, for every ice cool Maria on this earth, there's a sweaty Ben, another bartender at Pepe's. Ellie, the man chases the woman. Yes, Ben? Yeah, but the woman's got to indicate, you know, availability. Ah, you English boys are, how you say, big girls, can we say that? There's just <laughs> not much point in pursuing a girl if you don't know she likes you back. Well, Ellie is sultry, senorita. No real man will be able to resist chasing her. Once she stops reading. You think I'm sultry? Muy sensual. I don't know. She looks about 12. It's a proper idea. Hey, they always let me rent 15s at the video shop. No, listen to him, Ellie. Now, will you let me set you up on those stakes? Oh, Maria, we talked about this. I have pretty specific tastes. So you don't fancy a naked date in the back of a Hummer covered in drug money? Ben! Come on, Ellie. What is there to lose? Her head in a drive-by shooting. You haven't got anything better to do. Now you're a, a big dropout. Oh. Besides, I want to do a favor for our best customer. She's our only customer. I'm just not the dating kind. Yes, you are. But this book, Esta Confiscado. And maybe do a little something with this. My face? A little eyeliner here, some hairspray there. Oh, so you stop drinking, whatever this is. It's a 
snowball. My grand's favourite. Aye, you no drink them anymore. They are weird. Okay. No. Mm. Ah, Esteban, Cuban trumpeter. You meet him. He's still angry with me, but he will never say no to a beautiful woman. You are free Wednesday? Oh, well, it, my turn to clean the bathroom. Ah, muy bien. You'll be here. Ah, and Jake. You meet him also. The yeah, thing is, if, if I don't clean it on Wednesday... Now, you see Jake uh, Friday. Come but right I have to do... Ah, first, though. <sighs> <laughs> you see Miquel this Monday. He will treat you como una princesa. Just don't ask about the money. Um... Ah, so, there you go. Free dates. Exciting. Yes, Ben? Very. Have you dated all these guys before? I, I don't date, Ellie. I have lovers. Oh. So, will you do it? Although part of me wanted to turn her down, I thought about my cramped flat, the endless days of videoing my cat licking lemons for YouTube hits. Mostly, I thought about what Bianca Kane would do. That's when I realised what I needed to say. Yes. I'll do it. Come Monday, I found myself in Pepe's, nursing a vodka tonic and waiting on date number one, Michael. Maria was busy arguing in Spanish down the phone, you know, Latina stuff. But I was feeling good. I was Bianca Kane in a date with danger. Apart from not being an undercover cop posing as an escort. What I mean is, I didn't need Maria. I was riding solo and feeling great. Maria! Everything all right? Oh, it's nothing. What have you done to yourself? I, I just did what you told me. Aye, what is this on your cheek? It's glitter. Oh, okay. First, we lose these uh, plaques. Then we take these off your lips. Uh, what is this? Oh, oh. Muy bien. Much better. Oh, maybe this was a bad idea. Ah, Miquel will love you. Ben, what do you think? Ta-da! Different. Ah, here's Miguel. I go say hello. Wow. He's... Oh, ladies. Some of us were. Weren't you acting like a delinquente? Excuse me? As delinquente? Oh, As in criminal? Like enough. Come. Oh, you three. <clears throat> Ellie like a princess. Oh, yeah. Ellie, Miguel, Miguel, Ellie. <laughs> he was tall, dark and handsome. With cheekbones sharper than my mum's lemonade. But he also reeked of the underworld. Tattoos, huge gold watch, and an air that said he'd seen some stuff go down. Serious stuff. Ellie? Oh. <laughs> I leave you to it. <laughs> uh, shall we sit down? Yeah, all right. Uh, so, how do you know Maria? Oh, forget her. I want to know about you. Well, uh, I'm originally from Wickham on Hunt. It's a little village just... Cool, cool. Let's get some drinks, yeah? Maria? Yes? Me and my girl here <laughs> gonna need some more. Oh, I have to talk to Chef. He is crying again. But Ben will take your order. Ben! Put bottle of moe, yeah? Two glasses. <laughs> this is a Cuban bar. Everything on the menu is Mexican. We don't do moe. Give me the most expensive thing you've got, then. Carver it is. I could wrap the glasses in ten pound notes. Just bring the carver. Okay. Sorry about him. Oh, I'm... I have to take this. Okay. Boss won't like it if he finds out. But I'll tell you after we up tomorrow. Hear that? Drugs. Get out while you still can. He seems perfectly legitimate. I don't grow the stuff. I just deliver it. Perfectly legitimate. Uh, sorry about that, Emma. Her name's Ellie. Look, have you got a problem, mate? Nope. Ben was just leaving. <sighs> so... Uh, you, you've got a lot of tattoos. I mean, yeah, they remind me of all the hard times I've been through. I was going to get a Sudoku puzzle that I fainted in the tattoo parlour. Oh, oh, that one there. Maria's got one similar. Oh, I, I hadn't noticed. Hey, Maria! <clears throat> uh, Michael has the same tattoo as you. <sighs> I'm getting this one removed. Removed? What is it you say? Clean slate? Clean slate? Ah, exactly. I'm moving on. Haven't you got somewhere to be? The atmosphere between these two was more tense than Bianca's drag race and Wheel of Death. Actually, I've just finished. But before I go, here. What's this? What I owe you. Clean slate, remember? 
Adios, Ellie. As I watched Maria walk out, hips moving like a lemur in heat, I had the strange feeling I might never see her again. But I pushed that aside and concentrated on Michael. So, w- w- what does the tattoo mean? <laughs> oh, if I told you, I'd have to kill you, girl. <laughs> <clears throat> The next hour played out like a game of chess in that I had no idea what was going on. Michael seemed really distracted and left early, but it was for the best. He had danger written all over him. I was ready to take on date two. Wednesday night was my evening with Esteban, the Cuban trumpeter. But Maria was a no-show, and I couldn't shake the feeling something was wrong. Ben? You rang? Maria said she'd be here. Has she left? Interesting, Winter. Let's me know when my parents are calling. Anyway, has Maria left? Has Maria left? Oh! Bianca Kane would answer. Bianca wouldn't need to answer because, as stated in Only by Streetlight, her parents died when she was eight in a volcanic eruption. But yours are clearly alive and kicking. They know you've dropped out. Look, that's none of your beeswax. Now, go and check if Maria's left a message for me. Really? <gasps> oh! Me dijeron que eras hermosa. Pero no tan hermosa. Esteban? Lo siento. When I see such beauty, English words evade me. Esteban was the kind of guy who made you think of music like this. Get some drinks. <laughs> no messages from Maria. Maria? Oh, I thought she was working tonight. Oh, Monada. Maria won't be making an appearance. Why is that? She couldn't stand seeing us together. Her heart is fragile like a like a tiny baby bird. <laughs> no. How about a Cuba Libre? Five drinks later, we were deep in conversation. Just like Bianca and Duke on their first date in that abandoned steelworks. In my village, there was a little girl. She was an orphan. But she was so brave and so beautiful, like... Lo <laughs> siento. It's fine. I cry all the time. I would love for you to see my home. Come visit, Chica. <laughs> I have to learn the language first. I do evening classes. We're closing. It's only 11. We're closing early. The chef's having a breakdown. Let me get that candle. Leave the candle. My bar, my rules. Oh, maybe I should get home. I haven't put the food out for the cat, and if I don't put a bit of wine in her whiskers, she gets cranky. Oh, why end the night here? I play in a quintet at a club nearby. Free entry. <laughs> I, I do love quintets. <laughs> <laughs> I will make sure you get home safe. Exotic and a gentleman. <clears throat> At that moment, the cat could have been caught in the window for all I cared. What the hell? <laughs> <sighs> so the evening was going to end perfectly. Just like when Duke takes Bianca to the drive-in and they fall asleep in the back of his Cadillac. It was all so romantic. That is, until... Maybe afterwards we could, uh... Volver en mi casa y yo podría mostrar su teta. Excuse me? I didn't speak Spanish, but I got the gist. So much for romance. I pushed him off me, planted my heels like Maria and... Oh! The next day I sat in Pepe's waiting for Maria. I felt just like Bianca and dicing with death searching the casino for the blackjack killer's final victim. But just like in the book, Maria never showed. Me and Hank have been betting on how long it'll take before you give up and go home. Ben, I've got a hangover the size of a jumbo burrito and there's no sign of Maria. I'm not in the mood for your little jokes. Okay, just please don't hit me. Very funny. I've only got my date with Jake left. I need Maria's advice. I'd cancel if I were you. Oh. Parents again? (laughs) You know... Now I think about it, how do we know Maria's not lying in a ditch somewhere? Steady on, Bianca. No, I'm serious. I heard her arguing on the phone the other day, and I got this weird feeling when she left on Monday night. 
What if, while we're sitting here making jokes, she's on the run from a drug baron? <gasps> well, she's a victim of the organ trade. Ben, what if they took her kidney? I'm pretty sure her kidneys are fine. Have you heard of voodoo dolls? Ellie. What? Maria is fine. Now, when are you telling your parents you dropped out? Well, why raise my dad's blood pressure? I'll probably go back. I thought you hated it. Well... Yes? Do you hear that? Hear what? The thumb. It's a sign. Something has happened to Maria. Ellie, come on. No, no, it's our job to investigate. Listen, I know where Maria hid your book. The last time we saw her was Monday night, which makes it Tuesday, 24 hours, carry the one minute. 93 hours. That can't be right. Ellie. Let's think about the culprit, then. It's nearly always someone the victim had a romantic history with. Holy Wiccan Bon Hunt. What now? The guy she lined me up with today. She was involved with all of them at one point, right? The week these three guys come back into Maria's life, she goes missing. It can't be a coincidence. Ellie, they might all be creeps, but do you honestly think one of them did something to Maria? <sighs> okay, I might be jumping to conclusions. I guess I should give this Jake guy a chance. Could be the love of my life. <laughs> Actually, you know, now I think about it, I got kind of a weird text from Maria earlier. Well, how weird? Like, Colin Davies weird. What? I went to school with him. He used to set fire to things and then put them up his nose. Give it! Hey! Well, it's all Spanish. What does Yodi Berry have? means her... I should have listened. I knew it! This is clearly an SOS. I'll call her back now, quick! No, no, wait, wait. It might attract the kidnapper's attention. Uh, we should call the police. I don't know. Uh, it's only been a day. Uh, Plus, I don't know if Maria's... Strictly legal. Oh, you're right. It's up to us to find her. It makes perfect sense. My undeniable knack for puzzle solving, my, my skill with cryptic crosswords, it all comes down to this. Of course, I'll have to go undercover with the suspect. Whoa, what? Well, I'll see Michael again, then Esteban. Hang on. Dating the suspects? Would Bianca Kane do that? She'd do what needed to be done. Now fetch me a notepad and a stiff drink. It was Friday, and Maria had been missing for 48 hours. I had cancelled my date with Jake to see suspect numero uno, Michael. All the signs were there. The mysterious phone call, the matching tattoos, the dodgy check. I was ready to investigate. Hi, Columbo. Penny for your thoughts? Trench coat too much. You might want to lose the sunglasses. And the cigar. Well, you might want to lose the T-shirt and huh? the stupid bag. Good comeback. What's in there, anyway? Gym stuff. Gym stuff? Mm -hmm. You're not a gym person. You're a sit-on-the-toilet-eating-quavers person. Well, that was the old Ben. I'm revamping my image. But why? No reason. So, uh, you sure about seeing Michael again? Oh, yes. What about his tats? Huh? You should have messed with a man with a pain threshold that high. I can handle it, Ben. Fine. Tequila for Dutch courage. Oh, yes, please. Mm -hmm. Are you running a marathon or something? Ellie, drink the shot. Okay. Mm. Oh! <coughs> it tastes like fire! Oh. Ellie? Michael! <coughs> nice to see you again. Yeah. I didn't want Michael to know I was on to him. I was going to have to be nice. Um, barman, a bottle of your finest carver. My treat, Michael. You deserve it for being so nice and honest. Um, sorry I'm late. I was on a job. What, what, what kind of job? I love jobs. Um, a delivery man. He was a delivery man, all right. A drug delivery man. But how was Maria involved? I had an idea, but it was time to find out for certain. See Maria lately? Why, as, as she mentioned... I oh, just thought, you know, you'd notice she's not here with you being so close. I mean, you do have matching tattoos. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen her. He was playing hardball, but I ate hardballs for breakfast. Good cop time was over. Tell me what's going on. Nothing. You've been here an awful lot recently, twice this week. On dates with you. Oh, very clever, but nothing gets past me. Fess up, Michael! But please stop slamming the table. What was the check for? What check? The one Maria handed you the night she went missing. You didn't seem very happy about it. Forget this. She was in on the drugs with you, wasn't she? That's why you had matching tattoos. And when she decided to fly solo, gave you the money so that she could start her own cartel, you didn't like it. This town's not big enough for the both of you, right? I've got you all figured out, Buster! I have to go. Where the 
Where's he off to? Right then, I knew what I had to do. I was scared, but I also felt that buzz Bianca gets right before she catches her man. Just like the time I electrocuted myself with the blender. Get out of my way! Please. Stop right there! I said stop, creep! Where's Maria? What are you on about? Ellie, maybe read the side of the van. She's in there, isn't she? Open the van and keep your hands where I can see them. If I do, will you please leave me alone? Look out. He's got Brussels sprouts and he's not afraid to use them. Maria? Where are you? Watch my tomatoes! I don't think she's in there, Ellie. Well, then the drugs must be in here somewhere. Drugs? I'm a delivery man. Reggie's veg. Can you not read? What about the matching tattoos? We got them together this one crazy romantic night. I thought she liked us. And um, the check? From Pepe's. From my last delivery. She says she wants to look elsewhere for her veg. Is he crying? Uh, no. No, I'm sorry, Ellie. You're a nice girl, but I only agreed to date you because I thought Maria might take me back. If she saw me, you know, flashing the cash and that. I miss her. I miss the way she smiled, the way she flipped her hair. I even miss the way she watched TV, the way she walked, the way she... Oh. Oh. Well, this is awkward. Michael was nothing but a boiled sweet. Hard on the outside, gooey in the middle. He was out. I'd misstepped. But my spidey senses told me it was time to walk to a different beat. A samba beat. Come Saturday night, I was back in Pepe's, going over Esteban's words. Maria, Maria won't be making an appearance. I thought nothing of it at the time, but now his words took on a deadly significance. She wasn't making an appearance because she was chained to a radiator in his basement. Luckily, I knew my new look, inspired by Bianca in the courtroom scene of Bloodlust. Would get Esteban right where I wanted. Ellie, you didn't eat the prawn tacos, did you? No. Well, why are you making that face then? I'm being sexy. <laughs> oh, you're being serious. You wouldn't understand how an operation like this works, Ben. Enlighten me. I've created a three-point plan designed to break Esteban in under an hour. Care to share? Sorry, but right now you're a liability. Ah, oh, I guess you don't want to hear about this new text from Maria oh, then. Get that here. Would you stop doing that? Ow, it's S Z S three. Well, what could that mean? At least she's still alive, but I'm not working fast enough. Then, fetch me a Cuba Libre and a coat that looks like a Cuba Libre. I need to be on my A game. As you command. Hola. Oh, hello, Esteban. No slap for me today. I'm so sorry about that. I like my girls with a little firepower. Like Maria. I guess. She turned you down, didn't she? Oh, oh, oh. Girls don't turn Esteban down if they're smart. <laughs> Two Cuba Libres? Did he just wink at you? Oh, that's a nervous twitch. Shall we drink? Time to crack up phase one of the plan. The hook. A broken heart can make you do crazy things, can't it? All I know is I was broken hearted when you left the other night. I'm glad you've come to your senses. Quite. Oh, he wasn't taking the bait. I moved on to phase two, the maneuver. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry, Esteban. I'm just so drunk. <laughs> you could say anything about anyone right now, and I, I wouldn't remember anyone, and even Maria. Perhaps we go to the back of my car? What? I thought you were drunk. All right, enough is enough. Phase three, the threat. Now, he's the skinny chump. I know everything that happened between you and Maria. It was you she was arguing with on the phone the other day, wasn't it? Now, tell me where you've taken her or I'll throw you in the chokey. Really? You seem dense. Perhaps we should take a walk. Where is Maria, goddammit? How should I know? Because you've taken her! Ow! Oh, oh, no. I've never seen a Cuban slide to the floor so fast. Hank, get the first aid kit and a bucket of water for Captain Studley here. You okay, Ellie? Did I kill him? Mm, no, unfortunately. Turns out Esteban was just a big wimp. I'd accidentally smashed my glass, cutting my hand, and the sight of blood knocked him out. So much for him as a suspect. Maria was hard as nails. Esteban wouldn't have stood a chance. 
Whoa. Weapon. Where am I? Esteban. Oh, and the Cuban accents. About as genuine as John Travolta's hairline. Esteban was from Romford. All of a sudden, this became this. And so the search for Maria continued. I thought I was out of luck, and then it hit me. That text from Maria. Maybe it wasn't a dead end after all. Here on a Sunday, huh? And starting to suspect you have a thing for me. Oh, please. I'm strictly here on business. Besides, you should be glad of my custom. Not exactly buzzing, is it? I'll have you know we had three nuns in here yesterday. <laughs> anyway, what is this business you speak of? It's about Maria's text from yesterday. What about it? Well, in body count, the murderer is a maths genius who kidnaps this beautiful scientist. She manages to send a coded letter to Bianca, who cracks it just in time. The showdown takes place at a maths convention. Finally, it all makes sense. Oh, read that text again. It says... Ow. It's SZS3. You see? Mm. Oh, it's a code. An S could stand for the number 5, a Z, similarly, could be a 2... But they're not letters, they're the numbers 5253. Five, five, and what name would that particular combination of numbers spell out on a standard mobile phone keypad? Mm. J-A-K-E! Jake! Or Lake, could be Lake. Oh, it's Jake, the third guy Maria set me up with. I cancelled my date with him on Friday to interrogate Michael. Sounds like you've cracked it. We should celebrate. How about I make you a snowball? Hmm? Oh, and I was meaning to ask... Have you spoken to your parents oh, yet? Oh, Ben, are you not listening? This is the perp. I know. I was just wondering what's going on with the law thingy. <sighs> are you going back? That's really not important right now. Fine. So, well, how do we deal with him? Get him taken care of? I know a guy. Well, it's my Uncle Ron, but he's unemployed and feeling disenfranchised. Ben, this Jake guy's a pro. I have to lure him into a trap. Mm. I've arranged to meet him here tomorrow evening. Hopefully, at some point, he'll take me back to his lair and then, bam, I'll pull my taser on him. You have a taser? No, but in deadliest case, Bianca shocks the guy using loose wires from a lamp. I'll be fine as long as he has a lamp. Hey, how about we just hide out in the cinema? Well, they're doing a slasher marathon down the oh, road. I've got a case to crack, Ben. You're welcome to go to the cinema. I'll leave you alone with the psycho. I'll be fine. I did self-defence for three weeks in school. But if you must, you can watch over me from afar. Second that creep lays a hand on you, I'll crack out the lamp wires. Not that I'd care if he dismembers you or whatever. Right. I'm going to get a drink. Get me a whiskey sour. Well, will do. In that moment, something didn't smell right. And it wasn't the weak old banana at the bottom of my bag. It was Ben. There was something different about him. He didn't even make fun of my drink order. For the first time since I'd met him, he was hiding something. I knew I'd have to keep my wits about me. One whiskey sour for you, one for me. Thanks. So, you came all this way just to run your plan past me. Oh, every detective needs a lieutenant. I'll drink to that. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh, God, that's horrible. <coughs> <laughs> Maybe tomorrow I could go undercover. Pretend to be your Swedish cousin, Sven. Mm, sounds risky. If he sees me with you, he might try and kill you, too. I'm willing to risk it if you are. I'd have to keep my wits about me, all right. The next night, I got dolled up and made my way down to Pepe's. Detective. Good evening. Can I move your bag? Oh, God, this is heavy. It's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it. Do you wear a solid gold suit to the gym? No, there's some other stuff in there. I've got a party later. I have to dress up, wear a tie, that kind of thing. So now you go to parties and the gym? Told you. Knew me. Anyway, when's this creep getting here? Uh, T minus four minutes. Well, here's to your imminent death. <laughs> oh. oh. Now, <clears throat> you know... This guy is going to be a real piece of work. A class A scumbag. Ellie? Blonde hair. Sharp suit. Eyes like sexy icebergs. He looked exactly...
exactly like Duke in court, delivering the closing speech that would save Bianca's career. Oh, my Duke. Actually, it's Jake. Right, yeah. What's up? Hello, I'm Sven. Oh! Uh, Can you move to a table? Yeah, sure. Sven, is it okay that I park round the back? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Great. Mine's the Cadillac. <coughs> You want drinks? I bring offer. Yeah, I'll have a red wine, and Ellie here will have a raspberry mojito. You go sit, I drink. Stop it. Ellie, you coming? Oh, yep. I hope you don't mind me ordering for you. I like to think I'm good at reading people. Oh, it's fine. But why a raspberry mojito? Well, it's sophisticated, but not too stuffy. A bit zesty. Just a little bit fruity. <laughs> this guy was good, but I was playing it cool. That is so me. But tell me about you. Well, I'm 28. I'm a criminal lawyer. Get out of town. Yeah, I always wanted to get into law. Well, that's weird, because I also love justice. Are you a lawyer? Oh, <laughs> sort of. I was doing my law conversion course, and I decided to take a break. Why is that? Oh, I felt there was more to life than books that weigh more than me and having lunch with Sylvia. She, she's the cleaner. Well, there's definitely more to life, but you have the opportunity to discover that when you finish your course, don't you think? Uh, that makes sense. Hi, I'm Ben. I'll be your server for the evening. Can I get you any drinks? Yeah, we already ordered a red wine and a raspberry mojito. Maria used to love raspberry mojitos <laughs> before she Run went missing. Run along now. <laughs> Weird. He looks just like Sven. They're cousins. Anyway, where were we? Just doing the intros. Uh, so, where are you from? Ah, Wiccan Bonham. It's a... outside Suffern Walden. Good ale. You know it. We lawyers know everything. <laughs> You've got a really pretty smile. You know that. <laughs> you think so? Two raspberry mojitos. Yeah, we ordered one mojito, one red wine. Oh, oh Sven, the strong again. Oh, not to worry. <laughs> oh, what is that on the floor? This is your ring. I get. Ben, what are you doing? What? There's blood on his shoe. Don't be stupid. Is everything all right under there? Oh, everything's fine, fine. Sven's just a little slow. Uh, but he's going to get that wine now, aren't you, Sven? Yeah, sure. Bit odd, isn't it? <laughs> yes, he is. But let's talk about you. Uh, have you got any interesting hobbies? I like to paint. Oh wow! Yeah, working on a big Rothko inspired ah. piece at the moment. Lots of red and black. Ah, red paint. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My auntie still used to go out with a painter. I reckon he was laundering money through the gallery. I used to get this this funny feeling around him. Uh, but I bet. Mean, I, 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 you know all about that, using your instincts. I believe in hard work and logic. Oh, but sometimes you must just know someone is guilty. Oh, our justice system supports innocent until proven guilty, as do I. Oh, of course. So when do you think you'll go back to college? I'm not sure. You got anything else lined up? Not exactly. Well, I've only known you five minutes, but you seem like a bright girl, Ellie. <laughs> Shouldn't let that talent go to waste. You, you really think I'm bright? One white wine. I asked for red. Ah, oh, how silly of me here. Let me get that. Oh, oh. whoops. You're so. Oh, okay, I'll uh, go and dry myself off. What is your problem? I just don't want you to end up like Maria. But we're just talking. Aren't you supposed to be interrogating him? He doesn't fit the profile. Anyway, this really doesn't concern you. But I'm your sassy sidekick. You're not my sidekick. Now go away. Fine. Well, need to take the bins out anyway. But when I'm back... You can't you... come back. I'm on a date. A date? Don't tell me you actually like this guy. Not that it's any of your business, but yes, I like him. Then again, I've been spending so much time with you, I'd probably be content sitting here with a farting sheepdog. I'll leave you alone, then. Oh, I picked these leaflets up for you. I thought you might be interested in one of the courses, but what do I know? Spanish for beginners, creative writing, drama workshops. Who did he think he was? He knew I was going back to finish my law course. My tie's ruined. Where are you going? I know where to find a replacement.
I really don't think you should be going behind the bar. It's fine. No one's watching. Aha! Uh -huh. Here it is. Property of Ben Marshall, flat 3B, 52 Hamish Road. What idiot writes their address on their bag? Ah, oh, must be a tie in here somewhere. Just wait. I hadn't seen it coming. He'd fooled me right up to the last moment. I felt just like Bianca in Black Widow, betrayed by the person closest to her. Only instead of a Russian assassin posing as my mother, it was Ben. Ellie, you get thrown out. What's that? There was no suit, no gym stuff in Ben's bag. Only a pile of women's clothes and an old T-shirt with a name tag on it. Maria, what? What are you doing with a bag of Maria's things? It's been him this whole time. What are you talking about? I'm sorry, Jake, I have to go. But why? It's a matter of life and death. Of course, I had no idea what I would find when I got to Ben's flat, or actually how to get there. But two hours and three very helpful bus drivers later, I was standing outside his door, heart drumming. Sweatier than a fat kid at a disco. Maria! Maria! Who's there? Maria? It's Ellie. Uh, Ellie? Oh, you are alive! Aye! Oh, oh God. I'm so sorry. It's so, so good to see are you. you. Okay, crazy lady. Come in. You're, you're limping. Oh, God, Maria, we have to go now. What are you talking about? She's going to prison for a very long time. Who? The person who did this to you. Hmm? I've been on the case ever since you disappeared. He'll pay for what he's done. You think he did a bad job? Maria, you're, you're confused. You don't know what you're saying. Oh, you might think it's crazy, but I've wanted this a long time. No, I, I, I know what this is. You're suffering from Stockholder Syndrome. Gay? You might think Ben is a good guy, but trust me, he's a complete sociopath. What has this got to do with Ben? Well, he's the reason you're here. I didn't know who else to trust. I knew I wouldn't be able to take care of myself after the surgery. I, I still can't sit down. You ever tried being standing up? Surgery? I was starting to get the impression there had been some kind of mix-up. I know people think they are trashy, but I am Latina. I am supposed to have curves. You have no idea how embarrassing it is at family fiestas. Everyone calls me flat butt. You got bum implants. Uh, hello. And there it was. Maria's brand new bum. Wow. You like? It's, it's just like J-Lo's. I mean, it hurt, you know. But they gave me these painkillers. I was out of it for three whole days. Oh, I guess that would explain the weird texts. Huh? Oh, but... Who were you arguing with on the phone the other day? My mother. Oh, she's crazy. Anyway, what have I missed? Ah, how did those dates go? Oh, I actually just came from seeing Jake. They're sexy, no? <laughs> Very. <laughs> but kind of serious, right? Uh, yeah, I guess. And Esteban is a sleaze, no? Well, yeah. And Miguel, too soft. Not like them. Hang on, hang on. If you knew they were all duds, why did you set me up with them? Hey, it was just a bit of fun. I thought you needed it. Oh. And she was right. I had needed some excitement. Life had been boring before Maria and the dates and... So, are you and Ben together? Oh, dear me, oh no! Well, then how come he's been taking care of you? He's a nice guy. Believe me, I try and flirt with him, but all he ever talks about is you. <laughs> Me? Blah, blah. Ellie this, Ellie that. Where is he, anyway? He's meant to be bringing me new clothes. Oh, he's at the bar. I wasn't very nice to him. Well, go make up. <gasps> You're starting to bug me. Yeah, but, but what, what, what should I say? I speak from my heart. Or wear a slutty dress. Oh, I can't oh. thank you enough, Maria. Oh, seriously, too much hugging. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I'll see you later. And don't worry, your secret is safe with me. <laughs> Uh, Ellie, wait. If you didn't know about the implants, why did you come here? <laughs> it's a very long story. But I didn't have time to explain it all then. For the first time, I knew exactly who I was after. I reached Pepe's and stopped dead in my tracks. What if Maria was wrong? What if this trail had gone cold? What if I was about to massively embarrass myself in front of one of the only friends I've made in this city? Oh, Ellie, you scared me. I thought you were that tramp that comes in just before closing and pisses in the corner. 
No, just me. Jake left. I tried to make him wait, but he just... Pull yourself together, Ellie, I thought. He may never be as sexy as Bianca, and he may never have Duke's mint green Cadillac, but the boy in front of you in the Spider-Man t-shirt likes something about you. So take a deep breath and just say it. I didn't come here to see Jake. Let me guess. Couldn't go a moment longer without your Bianca Kane book. Here, I may have been reading it on my breaks. Sorry about the sound so stained. I didn't come for the book, either. I came to tell you something. Okay. You're... I'm... You're... I'm... You're... Such an idiot! Huh. You don't believe Maria was kidnapped, and this whole time she's just been hiding in your flat. Oh, that? Yeah, that! I went over there, and there she was, completely alive. Admittedly, more bootylicious than before. Well, you went to my flat? Well, I thought you were the kidnapper, okay? <laughs> well, you had a bag of Maria's clothes, so I followed my instincts, which were wrong, obviously, but still. She didn't want anyone to know. Also, the obvious thing to do is to let me believe she's been kidnapped. Well, the truth was boring. Life is boring, but I guess the way you see it, it, it's not. What happened next came out of nowhere, but it felt completely right. For the first time in my life, I did something that maybe even Bianca Kane wouldn't have the guts to do. I stepped right forward and... Oh. Whoa. Uh, yeah. <laughs> can't believe I just did that. Oh, oh, sorry about the... I need to stop with those guacamole bags. Oh, this whole time I've been coming to Pepe's dating these guys. I, I thought I was looking for Maria, for a boyfriend, but I was coming to hang out with you. Uh, you're, you're not saying anything, but it's cool. Maybe Maria was wrong. Maybe you don't like me in the same way, but you should know, you know. You, you might be the best sassy sidekick I've ever had. Maria wasn't wrong. She wasn't? No. So, you do like me? Yes, I like you. <laughs> and you haven't been going to the gym. What do you take me for? That would be a betrayal of my entire ethos. <laughs> and you are my sassy sidekick? I don't know about that. How do you know I'm not your arch nemesis? <laughs> the only man to ever outsmart you. Oh, uh, is this where you tell me that wasn't really Maria I saw in your flat? It was her evil twin. Yep. And I'm afraid, now you know that, I'm going to have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't quash my murderous instincts around you, Ellie. Well, you'd better be inventive. I know how a killer's mind works. So you know I'm going to pull you close like this. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to put my arms around you. Yeah. And finally... Oh, you... <sighs> Right on cue. Sorry, sorry, let me just cancel it. Answer. I can't. Well, Ellie, we both know you don't want to go back to that course. Why's that? If you wanted to, you'd just pick the phone up and tell them you were taking a break. Well, maybe that's what I'm going to do. Go on, then. Okay, fine. What are you so scared of? If I tell them the law's not for me, they want to know what the alternative is, and I, I just don't know what the alternative is. It's okay not to know sometimes, Ellie. And hey, if all else fails... I'll show you how to make a mojito and hold four plates of chili nachos at once. <laughs> pay isn't much, but it's better than nothing. Well, well, in Deadbeat Diner, Bianca Kane did go undercover as a roller skating waitress. We could get you skates. <gasps> and a sombrero. And a sombrero. And a chihuahua. Ellie. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll call them. Tell you what, I'll treat you to a snowball afterwards. Aww, with a little umbrella. Yep. Okay. Here goes nothing. Hi, Mum. Yeah, how are you? No, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I've been AWOL. It's just... Mum, there's something I've been meaning to tell you. And there you have it. The mysterious case of Maria was officially closed. Everything had changed, but for the better. Sure, I was officially on the run from the law. But at least I had an accomplice. The Mysterious Case of Maria was written by Florence Vincent, Imer Kenny, Cory Montague-Shole, Wemi Ogunyankin, and Sandra Townsend. 
Ellie was played by Alex Tregeer and Maria by Stephanie Racine. Ben was played by Adam Nagaitis and Miguel by Alex Lanepecun. Esteban and Jake were played by Ben Crow. The director was Abigail Le Fleming. Adios! BBC News at three o'clock. One of the favourites to become the next leader of the Labour Party has withdrawn from the contest. In a statement, Chuka Amuna, who announced his leadership bid just three days ago, said he had underestimated the intense scrutiny to which he would be subjected. The former Labour leader, Lord Kinnock, said he thought Mr Amuna had made the right decision. If he felt in his soul that he wasn't prepared to subject himself, and more important, his family, to the kind of attention which is fairly typical sadly these days he has done absolutely the right thing there's no point in at all in inflicting avoidable unnecessary misery on those that you love most David Cameron has met the Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon in Edinburgh to discuss further powers for the Holyrood Parliament the Prime Minister said he was committed to implementing the recommendations of the Smith Commission on further devolution, but agreed to consider further changes if sensible suggestions were made. Islamic State militants appear to be on the verge of seizing complete control of the Iraqi city of Ramadi. With a series of coordinated suicide car bombings, they blasted their way into a central government compound. They're now said to be besieging the security forces in one of the complex's main buildings. The leaders of North and South Cyprus have vowed to work towards a swift peace agreement. The discussions between the leaders of the Greek and Turkish communities are aimed at reunifying the island following four decades of partition. The number of operations cancelled by hospitals in England at short notice was above 20,000 between January and March. The figure from NHS England represents the highest proportion of all operations in two years. It's been announced that talks to try to avert a national rail strike will take place next week. Signalers, maintenance workers and station staff are due to walk out for 24 hours at 5pm on Bank Holiday Monday. BBC News. The News. Cuban bar that Saturday afternoon aren't particularly exciting. I was the new girl in a big city. And after a few weeks, a secret college dropout. Unbeknownst to my parents, I had left my law conversion course. As Detective Kane says in Playing with Peril, the law was smothering me, and a sniffer dog's no good without its nose. That's just before she renounces her badge and goes rogue, impersonating another criminal to find the killer. Then dreamy defense attorney Duke O'Sullivan rescues her in court. <sighs> just like Bianca, I was going rogue. Well, it was better than falling asleep in lectures. With its neon lights and rum-stained floors, Pepe's was the perfect hideout for a dropout like me. It was just like some dive where Bianca would meet Duke for an off-the-record rendezvous. He'd step out of his 1963 mint-green Cadillac, saunter through the doors, blonde hair slicked to the side, and order a drink from the sexy Latina waitress. Chica bonita, Ellie. The waitress just like Maria, the big name at Pepe's. A dame with legs that wouldn't quit and skin the collar of mocha. Definitely the coolest person I'd ever met in my 21 years. Hola, Maria. Solo again. <sighs> She'd ask me that every day for a month. Maria was never alone. I'm enjoying being single. You read too much. These books hey. oh, have to go. <sighs> Men are like girls who can read. They run in opposite directions. This is the 21st century. Oh, they are all gave men. Not all of them. Man, I stink. I need to stop eating those guacamole burgers. Bob, you. Ben, what do you think? Ta-da! different. <coughs> Here's Miguel. I go say hello. Wow, he's... Oh, Some of us were. Why don't you act like a delinquente? Excuse me? That's delinquente, oh, as in criminal. Shh, now. Go on. You three, <coughs> Ellie, like a priestess. Oh, yeah. Ellie, Miguel, Miguel, Ellie. <laughs> he was tall dark and handsome, with cheekbones sharper than my mum's lemonade. But he also reeked of the underworld. Tattoos, huge gold watch, and an air that said he'd seen some stuff go down. Serious stuff. 
Ellie. Oh. <laughs> I leave you to it. Uh, shall we sit down? Yeah, all right. Uh, so, how do you know Maria? Oh, forget her. I want to know about you. Well, uh, I'm originally from Wickham on Hunt. It's a little village just... Cool, cool. Let's get some drinks, yeah? Maria? Yes? Me and my girl here are <laughs> going to need some more. Oh, I have to talk to Chef. He is crying again. But Ben will take your order. Ben! Put bottle of moe, yeah? Two glasses. This is a Cuban bar. Everything on the menu is Mexican. We don't do moe. Give me the most expensive thing you've got, then. Carver, it is. I could wrap the glasses in ten pound notes. Just bring the carver. Okay. Sorry about him. Oh, I'm... I have to take this. Okay. Boss won't like it if he finds out. But I'll tell you after we up tomorrow. Hear that? Drugs. Get out while you still can. He seems perfectly legitimate. I don't grow this. Archers tonight at seven when Pips on tenterhooks. In a moment, a student investigates the mysterious disappearance of a waitress in our afternoon drama. First, hesitation, deviation, repetition. Perhaps now there should be penalties for getting personal. I was a uh, Tim Jarrett. I think the word young came twice. Oh yes. On just a minute, you need to be sharp. And now you're sporting a beard. You don't look as young as you used to do. <laughs> I'm sorry. And its host, Nicholas Parsons, always leads by example. But I was going to say, now you look younger than you used to. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it works like that. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you look fatter. I mean, thinner. <laughs> <laughs> the new series of Just a Minute. Graham, it's your turn to begin. Oh, crow's feet. <laughs> Starts next Monday evening at 6.30 on BBC Radio 4. And now on BBC Radio 4, a drama written by a team of young writers who first met while working on the EastEnders spin-off E20. Romantic comedy meets film noir in the mysterious case of Maria by Florence Vincent, Ema Kenny, Wemi Ogunyankin, Corey montague Shole, and Sandra Townsend. Maria's case found me in an unexpected way. You know, the way a stray cat sometimes adopts an owner. One minute you're throwing it a scrap, then BAM! You're settled into bed with the latest Bianca Kane thriller, and your new feline friend is curled up beside you. That's how the mysterious case of Maria found me. It pounced. The circumstances that caused me to be in a rundown... Should be here. Ah, and take. You meet him also. The yeah, thing is, if, if I don't clean it on Wednesday... Now, you see, take uh, Friday. Come but right I have to do... Ah, first, though. <sighs> <laughs> you see, Miguel, this Monday, he will treat you como una princesa. Just don't ask about the money. Um. Ah, so, there you go. Three dates. Exciting. Yes, Ben? Very. Have you dated all these guys before? I, I don't date, Ellie. I have lovers. Oh. So, will you do it? Although part of me wanted to turn her down, I thought about my cramped flat, the endless days of videoing my cat licking lemons for YouTube hits. Mostly, I thought about what Bianca Kane would do. That's when I realised what I needed to say. Yes, I'll do it. Come Monday, I found myself in Pepe's, nursing a vodka tonic and waiting on date number one, Michael. Maria was busy arguing in Spanish down the phone, you know, Latina stuff. But I was feeling good. I was Bianca Kane in a date with danger. Apart from not being an undercover cop posing as an escort. What I mean is, I didn't need Maria. I was riding solo and feeling great. Maria! Everything all right? Oh, it's nothing. What have you done to yourself? I, I just did what you told me. Aye, what is this on your cheek? It's glitter. Oh, okay. First, we lose these uh, plaits. Then we take these of your lips. Uh, what is this? Oh, oh. Muy bien. Much better. Oh, maybe this was a bad idea. Ah, oh, Miguel, we love. You know the concept of yin and yang? Well, for every ice cool Maria on this earth, there's a sweaty Ben, another bartender at Pepe's. Ellie, the man chases the woman. Yes, Ben? Yeah, but the woman's got to indicate 
you know, availability. Ah, you English boys are, how you say, big girls can be say that. There's just not much point in pursuing a girl if you don't know she likes you back. Well, Ellie is sultry, senorita. No real man will be able to resist chasing her. Once she stops reading. You think I'm sultry? Muy sensual. I don't know. She looks about 12. It's a proper idea. Hey, they always let me rent 15s at the video shop. No, listen to him, Ellie. Now, will you let me set you up on those stakes? Oh, Maria, we talked about this. I have pretty specific tastes. So you don't fancy a naked date in the back of a Hummer covered in drug money? Ben! Come on, Ellie. What is there to lose? Her head in a drive-by shooting. You haven't got anything better to do. Now you're a, a big dropout. Oh. Besides, I want to do a favor for our best customer. She's our only customer. I'm just not the dating kind. Yes, you are. But this book, Esta Confiscado. And maybe do a little something with this. My face? A little eyeliner here, some hairspray there. Oh, so you stop drinking, whatever this is. It's a snowball. My grand's favourite. Aye, you no drink them anymore. They are weird. Okay. Now. Ah. Esteban. Cuban trumpeter. You meet him. He's still angry with me, but he will never say no to a beautiful woman. You want a free Wednesday? Oh, well, it's my turn to clean the bathroom. Ah, muy bien. You